Hi, I'd like to start by appreciating the warm reception of my previous Growing Saguaros from Seeds video. I've never made a video with so many views and nice comments before, so I appreciate that. There's a link in the description to that video if you're interested. As with that video, I'm going to start with a slideshow of saguaro landscapes that I've taken since then. But instead of talking about general characteristics of the saguaro, we'll do a brief history of the saguaro migration into this region of the southwest U.S. Then I'll give a quick 7.5 year update on the seedlings. I'd like to say that I'm telling this story with information from two papers that are listed in the description. And this information is completely new to me. You know, we associate southern Arizona with the Sonoran Desert and its very unique cactus, the saguaro. In fact, it's the backdrop of many a western movie. But the saguaro hasn't always been here. Geographic northward range expansion of the saguaro into the U.S. was influenced by climatic warming since the end of the last glacial maximum of the Pleistocene period about 18,000 years ago. The saguaro reached what is currently considered the U.S. Southwest about 10,500 years ago and spread to the northern part of its current range, which includes Tucson, about 7,000 years ago. The U.S. Southwest deserts attain their modern day extents about 6,000 years ago due to the warming of this early Holocene period as the region became more arid. <laughs> so how do we know up the details of this expansion? Well, the main reason is the pack rat. Now, being a person that has accumulated several thousand dollars of vehicle damage due to these wretched creatures, it's hard for me to talk about them without going all nuclear. But I'll do my best to put this grudge aside. So pack rats collect small leaves, sticks, and fruits in their middens. They only collect about 10 to 50 meters around the midden. Their nests become cemented by their desiccated urine. <laughs> it's nice and lovely. In rock shelters, these middens can be preserved for tens of thousands of years. They are so well preserved that the macrofossil content can be identified and carbon dated. Because pack rats have short lives, the time resolution is quite good too. So the saguaro fruits can be identified and dated rather well. I guess it's good to know that this wretched rat is good for something besides providing food for the coyotes, bobcats, great horned owls, snakes and the few highly skilled house cats that have learned to survive these hazards. Of course, many a car and truck owner have taken their fair share of them too. And don't look at me. Here's a map of the current extents of the saguaro range in yellow. It's become quite extensive in this part of the country. I think it'll be interesting to see this map in another 10,000 years. But in order to get the pack rat off my mind, let's look at a few more saguaro picks before doing the 7.5 year seedling update. So here's a picture of saguaro pleats. Pleats allow the saguaro to expand and contract like an accordion, depending on whether it's taking in lots of water or it's drying out. And as the saguaro grows and gets larger in diameter, it doesn't keep the same number of pleats. It actually grows new sets of pleats. So you can see that happening here three times. If you look at the bottom, on the centermost pleat, follow it up, you'll see it turns into two pleats. And then if you take the leftmost of those pleats and follow it up, it turns into two more pleats. If you take the right one of that and follow it up, it turns into two more pleats. So as the saguaro grows, it grows more pleats. And here we have a couple cactus wrens playing around at the top of a saguaro that is just starting to grow its fruit buds for the year. This is one of my all-time favorite picks. It's got this beautiful juxtaposition of the Sienega Creek riparian area with fall colors and then up at the top of the canyon is this lone saguaro. Really a beautiful picture. Speaking of juxtapositions, I came out one morning after rain the previous day and saw these inch-high mushrooms growing around one of my seedlings outside. So I had to bring it in and get a picture of it. I don't know that you ever see these two things together either. So here's my growing update. I've got my two oldest batches of saguaros out here. The ones on the right started in 2016, so they're about seven and a half 
years old now. And the ones on the left are started in 2019, so they're three years younger. They're all doing quite well. There's a big range of sizes in the seven and a half year bunch with the two front right ones being the real standouts here. Um, otherwise, the 2019 saguaros have pretty much caught up to the 2016 ones. And that's because I almost killed the 2016 ones a couple of times before I got it right and I was able to use that information to get the 2019 ones off to a better start. So let's look at some heights. So these two big standouts, about the body height is about 11 centimeters on that one and about 10 centimeters on that one. And then the 2019 ones, the largest one is about eight centimeters. So they're all doing well, nice and healthy. Eventually it's gonna get time to start planting the larger ones in the yard, but I think I'll just let them grow as is for another couple of years. So here's my growing saguaros from seeds update. So like I did in the previous video, I've plotted the growth curve for naturally occurring saguaros in the Sonoran Desert in blue. The horizontal axis is the age of the saguaro in years, and the vertical axis is the height in centimeters. This was found from a paper by Steenberg and Lowell in 1977. So I have three groups of saguaros here. One group in red, which are my oldest ones. One group in blue, which were started in 2019, so they're three years younger. And then the group I started in 2021 in green. So I wanted to keep track of the growth of my seedlings compared to naturally occurring saguaros in this area. I tend to plot just the highest saguaros in each group bit of a cheat, but oh well. <laughs> so if we look at the red ones, which are the oldest saguaros, which are now seven and a half years old, they follow this growth curve very nice. The blue saguaros, which were started in 2019, so they're four and a half years old now. The highest one has deviated from this curve quite a bit. I've just been better about watering them, etc. And then there's the green ones, which are now two and a half years old. And they have benefited from the experience of the two prior growing, so they're staying well above the curve, as they really should, because they don't have such severe drought like they would have naturally, because I'm now watering all of them in between rains. I'm amazed at how well they follow this growth curve. And everything looks fine as far as their growth is concerned. So I really appreciate you watching this video. Hope you got something useful out of it. I sure did. Take care. Bye.